We're here backstage at Border Wars happening in Toronto, Ontario with ROH commentator Nigel McGuinness, who has got the authentic Toronto experience as you got to go experience Len Duckworth's for fish and chips earlier, I hear, from a, a rumor mill. Yeah, it was a delicious fish and uh, lots of delicious chips. Uh, nearly as good as the British zone. So, enjoyed it, yeah. Did, did, did it rank up with, with the British style? It's been a long time since I've had fish and chips, to be honest with you, but um, it, it certainly uh, hit the spot, so to speak. Yep. We've got uh, Border Wars coming up, and by the time people are watching this, obviously the event has happened. A fantastic event, I thought. Your commentary just superlative throughout the three hours. Uh, let's just chat a bit about, um, since coming into the, the commentary position, a mm. lot of people uh, looking at those Miami shows is really a big progression for yourself, and a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of praise coming your way after those Miami shows. Seemed to be the case, you know. I mean, uh, you know, it's always a, a work in progress. I had a lot of people come out to me, I go, man, you, you're getting so much better. I'm like, <laughs> was I bad before? <laughs> I don't know, you know what I mean? Oh, like, no. no, 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 no. So people said I've really kind of come into my own. And it's just, it, when you have a match like, you know, Davey and Michael Elgin, which everyone seems to be talking about, job's done for you, you know? You just say what you're seeing. It, I was legitimately blown away by it. So it kind of made it very easy for me. But yeah, I'm really coming into my own now, enjoying it, getting a chance to just sort of find my own voice and uh, having a great time being part of the company, you know? Yeah, the last time we talked to you, you noted some people that you were looking at as kind of influences, guys like Joe Rogan and just mm. even people outside of wrestling. And as you kind of are doing it, uh, you know, week in, week out and doing the iPay-Per-View events, are you kind of finding your own style that's kind of, uh, you know, different from all those influences and finding you know this is Nigel McGuinness's style so to speak I think so and I hope so and I've, arguably that's why people have been saying yeah you're doing really well now you know what I mean it's arguably like when you're wrestling and you start out and you know okay I used to be a big fan of Ultimate Warrior you know but, but uh, I used to love watching Fit Finley as well and how can I take a bit from here and a bit from there and all of a sudden it just blends together and then okay this is who I am just gets to that stage and I feel like I'm yeah getting close to that when did you get to that stage in the ring um, bloody hell, it was probably about five years, five or six years after I'd gone to Japan and just started here um, and uh, just started uh, after the pure title run. I think that was really when it started to connect for me. Yeah. I know that uh, you've been all over the place. You were in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago for Cauliflower Alley Club. What was that like? Wonderful, you know. I loved seeing all, uh, saw Les Thatcher, the guy that trained me originally. Yes. Saw a lot of old friends there as well who I hadn't seen in a long, long time. And so it's fun, it's enjoyable. And you get to see, you know, a lot of the old timers and, and see pictures of people that were doing what you were doing, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And it's, so it's nice to feel part of something, part of some kind of progression, you know. And I'm very proud of, of you know, where I came from, basically. Anyone there you met for the first time that was a, a cool trip just for you to meet? Uh, Rock Riddle was oh, kind wow. of, kind of blew me away. I'd, I'd never met him before, but like, uh, yeah, when he shakes your hand, he cuts a promo, you know what I mean? Really, really funny guy. Uh, and of course, I know a lot of our viewers are curious about uh, an update on the documentary. A lot of uh, interest online from it uh, with the Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, that is now concluded. So what is now step two after the Kickstarter process? Step two is trying to take 70 hours of footage and turn it into 90 minutes of finished documentary. And that's, that ain't going to be easy to do, you know. Um, so while I'm doing that, I'm basically trying to figure out what fits well, tell a story with everything else like that. I can't just take it, this happened and this happened and this happened. I've got to somehow make this into a good narrative, you know. So I'm working on that while I'm working on trying to get the rights to certain footage, trying to get certain music, trying to fix the sound issues, then think about post-production, how to actually make the DVDs, what I'm going to do with the DVDs when I have them, film festivals, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. So every morning, nine o'clock, when I wake up, I'm like, yeah, here's this long list of things to do and try and tick one off the, the, the list every day. Have you been in contact with any production companies or has this pretty much been a, a one-man army, so to speak? It has been a one-man army, but I have been talking to a lot of people. Um, I've been talking to a couple of editors out there who've expressed an interest and helped me out. Uh, someone wanted to come on board as a producer and a few production studios as well that were interested in doing other things with what I've got, you know. So I'm still in talks with them. Whether it will pan out or not, I don't know, but, but that's why I'm out there to make contacts and really try and move something with it. Well, we wish you all the best with, uh, with the documentary. Right. And uh, next time we chat with you, maybe we'll have a rough cut ready to go, Nigel, because I'm very much looking forward to it. I know a lot of people watching it are looking forward to it. And uh, for people who just want updates, uh, where's the best place to go for Nigel McGuinness fans? On Twitter, website, yeah, anywhere? You can find me on Twitter, at McGuinness Nigel, or at the McGuinness Nigel, I forget, concussions. Um, go to kickstarter.com and type in Nigel into the search box, and you can still see the product. You can still see what I'm doing. There's updates on there as well. 
Um, and uh, Facebook, you can find me on there, or just meet me at Len Duckworthy's in uh, <laughs> Toronto. Ask for the haddock. Yeah.